I have gone from hating the stall to playing the stall. <laughs> Greetings and salutations everyone, this is No Code Gaming, and I'd like to welcome you back to another Master Duel video. In this video, we will be going over the burn deck I've been using. Apologies, stall burn deck I've been using in the RN and R festival. So, shall we get to the cards? So first, I'd like to highlight the stall cards that are in here for simply just delaying your opponent and not the actual burn effect. So those are Battle Fader, of course. You can special summon this card if you are attacked directly and the battle phase is ended. Aroma Jar. Aroma Jar is non-destroyable by battle as long as it was phased down when it was attacked. And at the end of each player's end phase, you get 500 LP, so it's even more of a stall. And Vision the Cubic Seed. When this card is attacked, you can activate its effect where you put a counter on the creature that attacked it. And Vigium is turned into a continuous spell. And then during your main phase, while this monster is a continuous spell, you can activate its effect to special summon it back onto the field. The other stall cards are, of course, Lightning Vortex is sort of a stall card as you can wipe your opponent's field. Uh, Wabaku is the, your standard um, cannot do anything by battle card. Compulsory Evacuation Device is simply just another stall card in that hey, you bounce a creature back from uh, field to hand. You can actually use this on your own monsters if you see that they will be destroyed. Head Judging is also a stall card as it can negate monster effects. As long as you call the coin right heads up, this will affect you too, so be careful with it. And let's get on with the actual burn card. So your first burn card is Evil Thorn. Um, it is able to tribute itself and deal 300 damage to your opponent. However, it's able to summon two copies of itself from deck only. So if you see this in your opening hand, you're sort of out of luck if you have two evil thorns in hand. Uh, Marshmallow, for those of you uh, Yugi boomers know what this card does. It cannot be destroyed by battle, and if it was face down at the start of the damage step and flipped face up from attacking, the attacking player here takes 1000 damage. You also have Cauldron of the Old Man. During each standby phase, uh, you place one counter on this as well as when this card is initially activated. Then once per turn, you can activate one of these effects. Gain 500 LP for each counter on this card, or inflict 300 damage to your opponent for each counter on this card. So this card works in both stall and burn situations. Uh, Ring of Destruction, of course. This is the standard target one face-up monster your opponent controls, whose attack is less than or equal to their LP. Destroy that monster, and then both of you take burn damage based on that monster's attack. You also have Bad Luck Blast, which, um, because of the prevalent use of uh, Mystical Space Typhoon, what you can do is actually activate this in response to Mystical Space Typhoon, so you get both burn effects, where you can target one face-up monster your opponent controls, and both of you take half of its attack uh, as damage. And because it was destroyed via MST, you also get its secondary effect of inflicting 1000 damage to your opponent. Uh, the other cards I would like to highlight, of course, are Cubic Ascension, where you can actually use this card as another copy of uh, Vision the Cubic Seed. Alright, and your last burn card, Michion the Time Lord. This card is able to, if it attacked this turn, half your opponent's current LP. However, during the next standby phase of your turn, this card is returned to the deck. So, it's there for one turn, your turn and your opponent's. So, don't rely on it too much, that's why there's only one copy. It's also limited to one copy in the event. Now, on to the extra deck. Uh, number 54, Lionheart. Lionheart is a card where both you and your opponent take battle damage from battles involving this card. However, you can detach one material from it, and only your opponent takes that damage. Number 13 and number 31 are basically the same card. Both of them are basically copies of each other but you need both copies to get the uh, full effect. So what uh, they're able to do is, so if the other version of it, so if 31 and 13 are on the field, 
neither can be destroyed by battle as long as it has XC materials and your opponent takes any battle damage you would have taken from attacks on this card. So if you attack using this card, you'll still take battle damage. However, if your opponent attacks it, they will take battle damage. Be careful with that. I actually lost the game like that. Read your cards, people. Uh, there's also the Numeron Gates. If for whatever reason you're able to get a ton of monsters uh, on the field, as you can see, we have quite a number of level ones. You can probably get at least two of the uh, gates on the field. Next, there's Super Quantal Mech Beast. This card is only here if for whatever reason you have two Marshmallows and you need to get rid of a, a problem spell or trap card. Additionally, this card is also a wall as it has a 2800 defense. And lastly, in the extra deck, Power Code Talker. This has actually won me a game. As Power Code Talker is able to negate a face-up monster's effect. And uh, if it's pointing to any monsters, you can sacrifice it on your side and double its attack. And there's a certain monster that I'm pretty sure everyone has encountered in this event, and that's number 92. Negating number 92's effect and winning the game via Power Code Talker is very satisfying. Speaking of satisfying wins, let's get on to the replays. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
looking back at the final replay with the gadgets, there were a few plays I could have done better. I could have uh, Ring of Destruction their uh, Link monster so they can flip it face down, but that's only playing with hindsight. Given what I was looking at, I would have just used Cauldron of the Old Man just to gain more life points. That turn survived, and then uh, on their next turn, I could have uh, used the 300 damage because I had quite a few counters on it and would have KO KO'd them there. So, again, hindsight. Anyways, for the next video, I'm probably going to try the tier 1 deck of Megalith. Hopefully, I don't embarrass myself too much. Anyways, like if you like the video, sub if you are a sandwich, and have a great rest of your day.